Joe cell, and well, not a Joe cell, a Joe cell sensor, or it's, it's going to be used in a Joe cell sensor. But this particular thing is a temperature sensor. Uh, it has three things. It's a, it's a temperature sensor. It tells the salinity of a solution, or it tells the resistivity between the plates. Um, that's, and I'll show you a close-up of this sensor in a minute. Can, this, can you tell us what a Joe cell is? Okay, sure. A Joe cell is a mechanism which you can it uses to create Brown's gas through electrolysis means. And Brown's gas is? Okay, Brown's gas is a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen at a lower energy state, I say. It's not, you think of, oh, when you see the bubbles of solution, and most times, like what you see on your, your oven, or not your oven, when you put a pot of boiling water, that's steam. You're not chemically breaking the bonds, it, it's, it's steam, that's what's coming out of, off into the air. But when you take a Joe cell and electrically break the bonds, you're breaking hydrogen and oxygen, and what you have is a gas. It's not too much talked about, but there are a lot of characteristics of this gas that I believe can benefit society. Uh, one, one aspect of this Brown's gas is uh, it implodes, and uh, the temperature at which it implodes at is it's around, at, at normal regular temperatures, it's around 200, 225 degrees. The gas, and you said, well, I can't run anything. Well, the beauty of it is, depending upon the chamber or the substance that's surrounding it, will determine the temperature at which it explodes at. It doesn't explode, it implodes. It, it implodes in the other direction. So that, let's say in your car, you'd be able to take your tailpipe, clog it up, and have, it, have this thing coming in where your fuel normally comes into, and when it, when it comes through into your uh, into your car, it, when, it, when it ignites, it implodes, and there's no emissions that come off this. That's, that would be the ideal state. So, so how would it work? Gonna, What's that? So how, how does it work exactly? I mean... Okay. The method, there's, it's really simple. Uh, when you create Brown's gas, it's an electrolysis effect. I use AC electrolysis. I just happen to use the Joe cell as my mechanism of generating this, using it to generate AC electrolysis. What a Joe cell looks like, this is the one I got from Australia from that company, um, which you can currently get on the internet. It looks like four or five tubes, and let's see if I got a good, looks like a pipe. Think of it like five pipes, uh, and one of one inch diameter, two inch diameter, three inch diameter, four inch diameter, five inch diameter. So it's really ultra low cost. It's very little uh, low cost in uh, this using this device. But the, the but what it could be used for, it can greatly help society. So you can take your existing car and change the apparatus so it runs on this instead of a combustion. Yeah. Now, remember I was saying it implodes and yours explodes with working with Superchip, because everything's going fuel injected nowadays, and you don't have access, like on the older cars, you can change the carburetor around. But the answer is, I'm going to try to get with a couple companies that work with the programming aspect. So the only thing we do is change the phase. and some minor programming change. By doing that and mixing this technology, I believe, can answer that we won't have to get our petroleum from the future. So you would run it on, what, what is the input that you need? Uh, the input, would, on which I'm going to show you, on, let me show you some more pictures, is a 12-volt uh, battery, two 12-volt batteries, is all I need to run my board. And there are no emissions? No emissions. And it runs, uh, it's a little sophisticated how the apparatus works, but once I finish over the next two or three months and have the graphs of this, I only finished this. This right here was the sensor. This is the Joe Cell sensor. It's the feedback to tell my, to keep the water at a certain material level so it doesn't push the ions, what I'm going to say is push the ions into solution. You want to keep a balance, of, net balance of zero and have the catalyst 
do all the work for you. You don't want the metal, because the only thing metal does when you push it into water, it acts as a heater. And what is a heater? Heater is inefficiency. It's nothing more than heat that you don't want to take energy to make if you don't have to. And with the feedback coming from my sensor, you will not have to go into uh, go and talk to my processor, go into my signal generator, which I created, which I'm going to I'm going to step through the next slide, as I feel is a uh, is it, it will help. How long have you been working on this? I've been working on this three years, uh, but this is all my own time, and I developed originally this sensor. Let me let me get you, let me show you a picture of the sensor. <laughs> has been tested from temperatures between 25, it could actually go down to zero degrees all the way up to 230 degrees, which is the extreme temperatures you have within your car. Now, the beauty of it is, this sensor tells you, like I was saying earlier, tells you temperature, it tells you is resistivity. That, is that centigrade or Fahrenheit? That's uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. That's uh, temperature degree Fahrenheit. In addition to that, tells you the resistivity nature of the water. Uh, how I gonna then show you it? I'm not gonna say resistivity nature. I'm gonna call it grams per liter of salt, because it just so happened the catalyst that I used for this particular application was salt. Uh, very common, and uh, it's the main catalyst I used. That's where all my graphs, which I'm going to show you here. People think, well, if you had uh, so many grams of salt in solution, what you would find is between 32, 32 degrees and uh, 100, let's say 110 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you would say, well, the resistivity would remain the same. It doesn't. It, it fluctuates, but if we took readings, and that's what I did walk my sensor, and wrote them all down on these charts, and I made a graph of this, which I'm going to show you right here. You'll find it, it's not really 